A Stuart 10V steam engine rebuild, part 9. This old Stuart 10V is now rebuilt and it runs using compressed air. But there is a problem, a very common problem. It has a tight spot at the bottom of the stroke. This is how I made it run much better. In this video I'm going to show how to rectify this very common problem. First of all you need to make sure that the big end brass is a perfect fit on the crank pin. And in order to do this I remove the two nuts underneath it so I can remove half of the big end brass. As can clearly be seen in the image on screen the crank pin is in very good condition. No sign of any scoring, that's a good sign. To take up any play in a big end brass you have to remove a small amount of metal from both of the brasses on the inside surfaces. For this I'm using a whetstone which makes short work of the job. In the case of this engine I don't really need to do this. I'm just sort of cleaning up the brass. I'm doing the other side just to make it cosmetically more presentable. These brasses are not made from brass. It's actually gun metal. Brass would not wear very well in this application. I will tell you what the problem is with this engine, apart from it was built by a beginner and there are lots of errors built into the construction. The main problem is the crankshaft is not level. One of the bearings in which the crankshaft runs is higher than the other, so I need to pack it slightly using a shim. Now that the big end brass is in really good condition and a perfect fit on the crank pin, listen to how the engine runs. It sounds like a machine gun and it's not supposed to sound like that. And this is all due to the fact that there is a tight spot at one end of the stroke and in this case it's the bottom end of the stroke. The crankshaft is trying to move the big end brass to one side. This was not an issue with the engine as I originally received it, because there was no gland packing in the glands, the piston was a rattle fit, and the big end brasses needed some adjustment. And that's why it's not running too well. The answer is to make a couple of these. This is some commercial gasket material. You cut a slot in it, you trim it to length, fit it, and then cut off the other end. You need to make two of these, one for either side of the bearing. A very simple and very quick job. The question is, which bearing do I need to shim? I slackened both of the bolts on one side, and suddenly the engine ran a lot better. This told me which side I needed to insert the shims in. After doing this job, the difference is very noticeable. The knocking has all but disappeared. I will, however, need to make a very fine adjustment as both of the bolts are not fully tightened. Here is a before and after sequence. This is the before shot. And now with two of these fitted and the bearings tightened up, it runs like this. A considerable improvement, I think. I'm not fully happy with the valve timing. I need to make some adjustments to compensate for the damage to the port face. And this is one of many adjustments because I do tend to get a bit obsessive when I'm setting the timing of a steam engine. Ideally the steam or air should be admitted just before top dead centre, but I'm retarding the engine slightly, that way it will run slower. I'll tweak the engine a few more times, a very tiny amount at every step. This setting for instance was good, but I can get it better. Here the engine is running after the final adjustment. After a final tightening of the bolts that hold the main bearing to the sole plate, it sounds like this. It's so quiet you can actually hear me breathing in the background. The engine is almost fully rebuilt, but it does need a displacement lubricator. This Stuart No. 10V is going to be built into a steam plant using a Clevedon Steam Pisces Babcock type boiler. That arrived today and I'll show the unboxing video tomorrow. Also in with the boiler 
It was this displacement lubricator, and here I'm fitting it to the engine. Please be aware that none of these parts are of Oriental origin. They're from Cleveland Steam, and they're made in the UK. This displacement lubricator has an inbuilt regulator valve, which is very useful. This displacement lubricator will only work with steam, not compressed air. It doesn't matter how full you fill it, it's not going to lubricate the engine. So the engine has been externally lubricated while ever I'm running it on compressed air. I'm going to stop talking and just show you the engine running fast. As you've just heard, it does sound rather nice. Here it is running slowly and it's almost silent. I've made nine episodes showing how I rebuilt this engine, but there is much more to come. I've already mentioned that I'm going to build this engine into a steam plant using a Cleveland Steam Pisces model steam boiler. The parts are currently spread out all over my kitchen table, and from what I can see of it, it really is a very nice piece of kit. In the next episode, the title of the series will change from what it is at the moment, which is a Stuart No. 10V model steam engine rebuild, to making a Stuart No. 10V steam plant. I'm quite pleased with the results of the rebuild, considering the condition this engine was in. But that's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.